Watch this. Think we're done with mandatory minimums? Think again. There was maximum debate on House Bill 406 in committee today, whose members sent it forward with minimal endorsement. Governor Brad Little gives us his take on the recent public policy survey. Does he pay attention to and care about the same things? And speaking of endorsements, Idaho is all in on Trump, at least when it comes to its congressional delegation. Senator Mike Crapo explains his endorsement for president and why it's different than eight years ago. How do you prove that the last person who gave something to someone caused their death? It is a problem. These kinds of mandatory minimums deter the people we want to deter. They deter the big dealers. They deter the cartels. Well, after taking the weekend to think it over, the Judiciary Rules and Administration Committee came back to the hearing room Tuesday to talk about it some more. But they eventually came to a conclusion on House Bill 406. They sent it along to the House floor with no recommendation, which is odd because bills usually get forwarded with a due pass recommendation. We'll have more on that in a moment. House Bill 406 does two things. First, it adds fentanyl to the list of drugs in Idaho that carry a mandatory minimum sentence. Secondly, the bill creates the crime of drug-induced murder, which means if you supply fentanyl and it kills that person, you can be arrested, charged, and tried for murder. Andrew Bartline followed the committee hearing today and earned, well, you heard two more hours or two or more, I should say, more than two hours of testimony and discussion today. Yeah, and it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of people trying to understand the exact language of the bill. I guess four hours yeah. of testimony couldn't quite hammer that out. So there's a lot of nuance with it and a lot of concerns and questions for the bill sponsors as well. Some of the strongest line of questioning and pushback came from what lawmakers call the balance of power. Now, this bill grants the government the ability to prosecute drug trafficking without proving the intent to sell. They say the quantity alone is the intent, but also to charge someone with murder without proving intent to kill. We are dealing with a fundamental right, liberty. We are dealing with a criminal justice system that is based on separation of powers where every branch of government is involved. This bill reshuffles the deck as far as the balance of power and the checks and balances goes. If and as this passes, our prosecutors and our law enforcement, you, you will have just been invested with more power and more authority, and you, you are being trusted to be wise stewards of it. We are not going to fix this problem by passing this bill. There's a deeper problem of moral decay in our society, and only the churches and the families are going to fix this problem. And, and I do believe this bill will create some more problems. Lawmakers questioning the bill also had two recurring concerns that didn't seem to get fully satisfactory answers. First, a minor can be tried as an adult for murder under that clause. And second, a mixture of fentanyl with other substances, well, that whole mixture, the whole weight, will be treated as if it is all fentanyl. Now, that mixture component is consistent with other mandatory minimum drug laws in the state for a drug, say, like cocaine mixed with something out. It, else, it's the same. But Republican Representative Kenny Roten was the most vocal about his support for this bill in committee. He also had the most human argument, too. You can argue all you want. We cannot do anything. And this year, it'll kill more. I'll guarantee that. I'm pretty sure I can guarantee that. Up to us. Up to you. It's very clear. The thresholds are very high. I don't think we're going to ever get a user. We're going after that guy with the 10,000 pills. We're getting lost in the weeds on these distractions on users. Focus on what we're trying to do. We're going to keep people from dying. If we don't move on this, we're going to go lax on this. We're going to, hundreds of people are going to die from overdoses if we don't step into this decisively. Now, it was stated many times that the bill is meant to be a deterrent. Police testified amongst those four hours last week with saying that it is a strong policy that will push traffickers to our neighboring states and it would slow the flow of fentanyl from coming into Idaho. There was a unique moment in committee today, however. It's something I'd never seen at the State House. Lawmakers, one after another, sort of sharing their hearts during discussion, seemingly asking for forgiveness and understanding from... I don't even know who. And Republican Representative Heather Scott kind of broke the fourth wall, gave us an idea as to why. 
there's so many aspects of this. And then when you tie in what we have dealt with, some obviously since summer, but for the last two weeks, I'm embarrassed at some of the things that have happened surrounding this bill. And just I'll just leave it at that. This bill is, has weighed on my conscience um, because we want I want to get this right. It's not an easy vote sometimes because we do harm people in this work. We so, you know, I don't want anybody going to prison. I, I try every day to keep them out of there to do what I can. But in this case, I'm the, I'm the support. And it is an election year, as we all know, and that's the time where things get ugly. So um, it's very hard. Anyone that votes against this bill, there's, you know, it, it will be spun. Maybe if each of us hearing this or in this room would do our part to not be those people, um, I think it'd be a better world. Did you read between the lines there, Brian? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, lobbyists. Lobbyists. It seems that it's a heavily lobbied bill. Right. And these lawmakers are exhausted. And this is a heavy topic because this went on for more than two hours, but yet there was no public testimony. This was just those in the committee talking amongst themselves, correct? Yep. And they pushed it to the floor with no recommendation. With you decide. And, and there was even a point there where somebody changed their votes. Is that correct? Uh, Representative Ehart and Allgood, they first said no. They realized they were on the losing end of that vote, and they changed their votes retroactively wow. to support the bill. Well, it just shows you the kind of way that thing is going with no recommendation to the House floor. Thanks, Andrew. Word up, it's Word Girl. Word up, it's Word Girl. Okay, so this was a term that caught our eye yesterday during the morning session of the House State Affairs Committee. And it was how Republican Representative Julianne Young from Eastern Idaho kind of referred to herself. And of course, that PBS Kids theme song came to mind. Well, Word Girl, I'm sure we're not the only ones in this, right? Word Girl was added again this morning in another House State Affairs Committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Representative Julie Ann Young. In a meeting that took less than three minutes for the second day in a row, Representative Julie Ann Young went after more words in Idaho code. This RS provides a legal definition for sex, both male and female that is clear and easily understandable and i believe that it provides us a helpful legal platform as we navigate some of these difficult issues in the state of idaho in regard to policy to navigate difficult issues with her bill now known as house bill 421 representative young wants to make the word gender mean the same as the word sex when referring to male or female but she doesn't want gender to be considered synonymous with gender identity an internal sense of gender gender role, or gender expression. Basically, any transgender stuff. Why? Well, as Representative Young put it yesterday during her testimony to change fetus to preborn child. I'm a word girl. I'm an English nerd. Word up, it's word girl. Why get the speed of sound vocabulary, that sounds. And I think it's really important when we communicate that we use language that everybody understands. However, her capabilities aren't confined to vocabulary. I'm also a little bit of a math nerd and I have helped teenagers do algebra for many years. <laughs> if we make a math statement and we say A equals B, and then we say B equals C, then you know that A equals C, right? But as pointed out by Planned Parenthood, that's not the case when it comes to gender and sex. Sex is the preferred term for biological forms. Gender is limited to meanings involving behavioral or cultural traits. And they suggest Representative Young. I'm a word girl. Revisit her dictionary. Okay, so this is by no means meant to make fun of Representative Young. But just like you, sometimes it's the little things that stick out, and sometimes it's those little things that make covering another session of the Idaho legislature a little bit more interesting. And just like yesterday, our emails and phone calls to Representative Young went unanswered. So we'd love to hear about her. At least talk to her. All right, is Governor Little on the same page as those people who elected him? Well, this question coincides with the release of Boise State's public policy survey, which gives lawmakers and those in charge of the state an idea of what's important to everyday Idahoans. Joe Paris asked the governor about this today, as well as a few other things. Yes, sat down with Governor Little for an extended interview on some major Idaho topics, Brian, and uh, the full 20-minute-ish conversation, that'll air 
this Sunday morning on our Viewpoint program at 9 o'clock. But we did want to include something here today on the 208. Following from Andrew's story yesterday, breaking down that public policy survey, I asked the governor for his thoughts. And if you missed it, though, Boise State, they surveyed about 1,000 adults across the state with the sample representative of the state's population, both geographically and demographically. So their survey results show that Idahoans, they want the legislature to prioritize education, jobs, the economy, and housing. But the truth is that the loudest conversations at the Capitol, online, on TV, they tend to be about social issues, abortion, transgender health care, library content, major hot topics. So I asked Governor Little about the survey. Idahoans were most interested in these kitchen table economics, these kitchen table topics. They weren't so interested in social policies and the politics of that. What, what type of reaction do you have to that? Well, some of those kitchen table uh, that that's always been my position. That's how we do our budget. Uh, but they don't uh, garner the interest and the passion that some of the social issues. But it, at the core, you know, my goal is for our kids to stay in Idaho. They got to have a good job. They want to make sure there's good schools. They want to make sure the streets are safe. They want to have uh, outdoor opportunities. Those are the things that are going to make the difference of the, the high school kids that have raised their hand and said they want to sign up for launch, that's, those are the things that they're going to stay here. The taxes are at a minimum competitive with every other state, at a maximum are not onerous to them living here in Idaho. And Governor Little has made it clear through his time as governor and as lieutenant governor that he's a major believer of figuring out those everyday issues. Something to keep an eye on, though, is the economy. And, Brian, jobs and the economy, they'll come in uh, second place, actually, priority rise for those Idahoans who were surveyed. And education mm -hmm. is number one. Right. Governor Little and I touched on his Idaho launch program. We touched on both of that as well as building up the job force. But a big thing to keep an eye on during the legislative session as we go through all of this is that COVID cash bubble. Again, we had millions and millions and billions of dollars being pumped into the state through the coronavirus pandemic, right. that money has disappeared. So there's going to be some, I guess, domino effects in the near term and the long term. Tightening the belt, I think, is the way they... Oh, yeah. All We're right. going to have to tighten. Joe. Well, there's another thing we asked Governor Little about today. It was a statement on starting teacher pay because we tried to get this answer before. Remember when we showed you his tweet back on the 4th of January that said, we brought Idaho up from the bottom 10 nationally to the top 10 for starting teacher pay. And so we wanted to know where that data came from. The governor's, off, governor's office said they got the data from the National Education Association. But when we tried to look for that data, well, we couldn't confirm that claim that Idaho went from the bottom 10 to the top 10 when it comes to starting teacher salaries. The NEA data that we saw, well, it only included the school year 2021 to 2022. So we did ask that about, I asked about that, I should say, Governor Little about that today. And he admitted, he said that isn't exactly correct. My goal was to move from the bottom 10 to the top 10. Well, subsequently, a lot of other states raised theirs up. So, but I'll, I'll, take, I'll take where we are at 15th. What I really am interested in is being competitive with other states. Okay, so maybe we were for a brief moment in the top 10, but he claims we're 15th in the country. So we just don't know what that data is yet. Still not sure to find out and verify that. National Education Alliance says in their 2023 report, Idaho ranks 30th in average teacher starting salary, which is just over 40 grand a year. Either way, still not bottom 10 like we used to be. All four of Idaho's members of Congress have endorsed Donald Trump for president, but only one of them was willing to talk to us about it. Senator Mike Crapo tells us why this year's endorsement is different than his non-endorsement of 2016. Well, you certainly had a lot to say about those endorsements yesterday. So let's keep the conversation going. Text us at 208-321-5614. And as always, include your name and the hashtag the 208. Keep your name calling to a minimum and the text messages themselves, and we'll probably end up showing yours at the end of the show.
The endorsements for former President Donald Trump to be the future President Donald Trump by Idaho's congressional delegation were rolling in yesterday. After Ron DeSantis suspended his campaign on Sunday, we heard from Senators Mike Crapo and Jim Risch and Congressman Mike Simpson, all of them throwing support behind Trump. For a couple of them, it was a complete 180 from eight years prior. And we were wondering why. Well, today we got that explanation from Senator Mike Crapo, who yesterday added his voice to the growing number of people standing behind Donald Trump, as he put it. In his release, he cited wanting a strong country, both economically and abroad. But as we also showed you yesterday, that contradicts what the senator said in October of 2016, when he said, I can no longer endorse Donald Trump, saying I've spent more than two decades working on domestic violence prevention. And he repeated his actions and comments toward women have been disrespectful, profane, and demeaning over the years, or at least leading up to the 2016 election. Remember, this was right after the bus dial or audio was leaked about grabbing women. Well, this is what Idaho's senior senator said about all of that today. Yeah, I said those things. I also said that if it came down to him or Hillary Clinton, that I would choose him. And that's what happened. It came down to him or Hillary Clinton, and I chose him. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad the country did. I guess the question is, what's changed between then and now? He was just found to have sexually assaulted a woman in New York in $5 million in damages. That does not apply to, to this, to today? You know, look, people, President Trump has uh, contra controversial behavior. I identified some of it. Uh, the bottom line is that whether a person likes Donald Trump or dislikes Donald Trump, the decision we have to make is between him and Joe Biden as the leader of our country. And for all of the reasons that I just described, that's an easy decision. Okay, so bottom line is his record of abuse toward women doesn't apply today like it did eight years ago. Uh, you can use whatever words you want. I've explained what I said then, which is if the decision comes down mm -hmm. to having someone who will lead this country powerfully versus someone who will tear the country down, America should choose the person who will strengthen this country. So when I asked about the 91 felony charges against Donald Trump, Senator Crapo pulled the weaponized DOJ card. Back in 2016, Senator Crapo did flop on his non-endorsement, by the way. As he mentioned, he did end up, well, let's see, he endorsed Trump at the beginning, then withdrew it, as we talked about, then said a couple weeks later, he's voting for the Republican ticket, regardless. And when it became clear, Trump was going to be the Republican candidate for president. Meanwhile, Trump's defamation damages trial because he continued to demean and defame writer E. Jean Carroll before, during, and after the trial where she was found, he was found, I should say, to have sexually assaulted her. That trial continues.
mild and showery pattern continues for us. And I'm sure you noticed if you looked out the window today that we had some clouds and even fog in valley locations. But also you may have noticed if you stepped outside that those temperatures are more on the mild side, so not feeling too cold in many places. And we are tracking the another chance of widespread showers starting tomorrow night, and that will include valley rain and mountain snow. So let's take a look at some of those temperatures right now. You can see we're still in the 40s across valley locations in the Treasure Valley. Also above freezing in all those mountain locations, including McCall at 34 degrees and over freezing in Magic Valley as well. We've been tracking some of that sparse moisture all the way through today, but not really a whole lot adding up on our radar. But you can see we're going to track those continued chances of isolated showers for about the next hour or so before they move out for the evening. And then we'll see continued chances of fog in valley locations before we see our next round of moisture tomorrow afternoon. So that will start making its way through around lunchtime and then continuing in those evening hours and even overnight. And so we can see that in the mountains that is expected to be snow and valleys. We're expecting that to be rain. So snow will be falling in that 4,500 to 6,000 foot mark. And the active pattern continues with an additional round on Friday evening. So we're staying very busy, but on the lighter side as far as community as accumul accumulations go, but tomorrow another mild day on tap for us with those temperatures expected to be above freezing in those mountain locations and even more mild temperatures are on the way for us as well. I've got a new name. We got free money and unfortunately no sled dogs. Here's Jude Binkley with your 411. The Faces of Hope Victim Center has a new name. It's now called the Ada County Victim Services Center. Same location in Boise, same phone number and all the same services, just a new name. The Ada County Commissioners and the Ada County Prosecutor's Office think this name fits the center better and won't be confused with one of their partners, Faces of Hope Foundation. The Ada County Victim Services Center is for people experiencing interpersonal violence. You can go to the center on South 6th Street 24-7. If you're a current Twin Falls County High School graduating senior going to attend the College of Southern Idaho, then you can apply to get some money. The Twin Falls Prosecuting Attorney's Drug-Free Scholarship is now open. Students have to write an essay on the topic of reducing the use and sale of illegal drugs in Twin Falls County, then present it. First place gets their full tuition paid for, second and third place get one semester of tuition paid at CSI. Find applications at Twin Falls County High School and the Prosecuting Attorney's Office. Make sure you get your applications in by March 1st. Sad news for sled dog fans, the Idaho Sled Dog Challenge 300 mile and 100 mile races are canceled. Race organizers said trail conditions are dangerous after the recent warm front, even after all the snow, so the races are a no-go. But the Warm Lake stage race is still happening. And that's the 411 on the 208, I'm Jude Binkley.
Boy, I mentioned Donald Trump on this show, and boy, text messages go nuts. Can't keep with all of them. Keep up with all of them. Just like yesterday, we'll try to share a few today for the end of the show. Why doesn't Crapo support Nikki Haley, asked Barb and Cuna. She's Republican, has experience in politics, and doesn't have, doesn't have questionable moral values. Seems she'd be a better Republican to throw his support behind. That's according to Barb and Cuna. Thank you for asking Crapo honest questions and holding him accountable for his laughable, cowardly, and pathetic excuses. It's clear his sexual assault bill and his corresponding criticism of Trump are political fodder. Please be aware of this hypocrisy and vote for better representatives. That's from Kevin. And this one, uh, teacher pay, $40,000 a year. Pay per hour for the number of hours a teacher works actually equates to less than minimum wage. Skip the college uh, education and just go work for fast food. That's what uh, Deb's opinion is of that. The legislature isn't going to fix the drug addiction. They're going to just fill up the prisons. Only drug addicts and their families and doctors can fix the addiction, says Larry. And that's kind of what Representative Scott said, that this isn't going to be settled in a hearing, a committee hearing, or even on the legislative floor. It's going to be something that's going to take a little bit more than that. There's no black and white with this. For a word girl, young is strangely mum. Your attempts to speak with her, says Kim. That's good. That's a good point. Yes, we tried several times yesterday and today. We'd love to talk to her about her, I guess, inclination to change some words in Idaho code and why. We'll see you tomorrow.